taxes. Funds raised from these bonds are invested into structured projects with maturities of 10, 15, or 20 years. They build things like ballparks, courthouses, or other public works projects. If you're rich, you are more likely to hold tax-free bonds where the principal is preserved, though the interest earned from these types of bonds will not significantly add to your total wealth. For more great resources to help you create unlimited wealth and happiness, visit our website at crackingyourmoneycode.com. I'm Heather Wagonhouse. Now go out and unlock your wealth today. Jiggy Jaguar. Neil Bortz with us today. He's If they put Fox News on, liberals will complain. Uh -huh. If they put CNN on, conservatives are going to complain. Jiggy Jaguar. We've got Tom Donahue with us today. I started to organize, uh, no, not like Obama. Jiggy Jaguar. Publisher of Talkers Magazine, Michael Harrison. And uh, it's a lot of fun, and, and it's very informative, and uh, it, it does a lot of things. One, it, it's www.jiggyjaguar.com. Welcome back to the world-famous Chiggy Jag YU Show, coast-to-coast coast and border-to-border border, all over the World Wide Web and on 50-plus stations throughout the U.S. and Canada. Ann Specker joins us here in just a few moments. She has an amazing book. We're going to talk about that in our second segment, but we wanted to get her on during this first segment of the broadcast to talk about the Chechen female terrorists. And Dr. Ann Specker joins us. Doctor, how are you? I'm good. Good. Let's talk a little bit about the Chechen female terrorists. This just this story just fascinates me. Uh, it it seems to the the Russian police are searching for four women suspected as of uh, suicide terrorists, and um, they they're in Sochi, the site of the Winter Olympics, which is a, a big hotbed for news. And um, the recent suicide bombings that have killed 34 people and injured dozens more in Russia and the uh, sighting of, of, of some of these ladies um, has, has got a lot of people up in arms and wondering what is going on with the Winter Olympics and the safety. And uh, you're with us today. You're a world-renowned expert on terrorism. Let's talk about this. Are, 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 these, are these women a serious threat to the Olympics? Yeah, I think they are. Um, there's four of them, and... Um um, the, the, the Chechen movement, it started in 1992. It was an independence movement to get away from, uh, you know, remember the Soviet Union was falling apart. And Belarus, Ukraine, the rest of them got free. But Chechnya was not allowed to leave the Russian Federation. So they fought two wars. Then they transitioned into a terrorist movement to try to get free. And they started using martyrdom operations. And right from the start, they used women. So they had 115 suicide terrorists, 25 acts, and these acts included uh, blowing up planes, buses, trains, uh, subways. They took the Beslan School, 1,300 women and children. They took the Moscow uh, Theater, 800 uh, hostages. And uh, now the terrorist movement has spread into Dagestan, Ingushetia, and the surrounding region, and they call themselves the Cauc Caucasus Emirates. And they're basically a separatist movement to get free of Russia, and they use terrorism. They believe in martyrdom. And uh, the women have been referred by the press as black widows. And this uh, Ruzana that they think is loose inside the, um, what does Putin call it, the steel ring? Um, they think that she's uh, penetrated his steel ring. Uh, she is a widow. So she fits the, the moniker Black Widow. Her husband was killed in the car uh, sitting right next to her. The Russian forces uh, shot him dead. She escaped and lived, but now she's dedicated to dying. She wants to avenge his death. And this is a group that has the capability. They know how to get people across checkpoints. They know how to um, build bomb belts. And uh, she's been trained. And the, the second one um, is also a widow, and she... She was supposed to attack last June on the day of Russia, but maybe, I, I don't know why, but her attack got postponed, so now she's been sent to Sochi. And the other two um, were good friends with a woman who's already exploded herself on a bus in Volgograd. So they're lethal, no question about it. They're trained. But I don't think that they're the only threat at the Olympics. This is a group that... Um, uh, knows how to pay bribes. Uh, they got into Beslan. Uh, they told their hostages, we bought you, and meaning that they um, paid small bribes to the corrupt Russian uh, security forces to pass checkpoints. 
And uh, uh, on a different uh, patriotic day, they even managed to get explosives under the review stand of the Chechen president. So when he stood up to review the great military uh, might, the tanks of the um, Russians, uh, they blew them to smithereens. Wow. So, yeah, so they, they, um, they have capacities, and on the Russian side, we know that the Russians are um, susceptible to taking bribes. Well, that's that that's that's nice. <laughs> that's that 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 makes me feel good about the Winter Olympics coming uh, well, I, very I can soon. Tell you some some good news about it. And the good news is the the leader of the Caucasus Emirates um, is he follows a distorted view of Islam, a yeah, hijacked view that believes that suicide terrorism is a form of martyrdom. But he swore off of suicide attacks and he swore off of attacking civilians after Beslan because. He began to understand that there were too many Muslims being killed, and that it and that attacking women and children created a backlash, and that uh, people that formerly had uh, strongly supported the Chechen independence movement in the Middle East and so on uh, condemned them when they took women and children. So I don't think that he, even if he could uh, hide a cache of weapons, as they did in the Beslan attack, they had a, a uh, weapons stored under the floorboards of the school before the attack. If he could get weapons into the Olympic venue, I don't think he would order a Munich-style attack. I don't think he would attack the athletes themselves. I think he's had too much experience being condemned for going too far. And, um, and I don't think that they're going to be able to bribe themselves into the actual Olympic venue. We've got a great guest with us today. Dr. Ann Specker joins us here on the broadcast, world-renowned expert on the psychology of terrorism and author of several books, including Talking to Terrorists. We're going to uh, chat about that in our next segment here on the broadcast. It seems to me uh, there, there is a lot of things going on over there. Um, who exactly are the Black Widow suicide bombers? We, we hear a little bit about these, these folks. Uh, what can you tell us about them? Well, the Black Widows uh, refer to the Chechen terrorists, and now they're not just Chechens. They're also English and Dagestani women, and these four that are under search right now are Dagestani. But this is this whole region that the separatist movement calls the Caucasus Emirates. And uh, they were called Black Widows when they um, showed up in Moscow. There were 40 terrorists that took the theater, and there were 800 um, theater goers that they held for three days. And the women showed up with uh, these black um, uh, Islamic robes and uh, headscarves and bomb belts strapped on. And the media thought that they were in mourning, that they were widows in mourning. But really, they were just dressed in Saudi-style Salafi um, uh, outfits, you know, to look religious. And the media called them black widows. The fact is that every one of the uh, suicide terrorists that we've studied, male or female, has had a uh, traumatic uh, death at the hands of the Russians. So a father, a brother, a sister. Um, it's not always a husband, but th that's why they're called the Black Widows. We've got Dr. Ann Specker joining us today here on the broadcast. Should Russia consider canceling or postponing these games, or, or what, what do you make of this? I don't think so. And another, another piece of good news that I would say is that now we also have um, the international security folks going over there. I mean, we've offered our help to the Russians. So for the Olympic venue itself, even if um, they manage to smuggle things in, I think I, I trust our guys. Our guys are really good for you know searching and knowing how to detect explosives and that kind of thing. So I think all working together, we probably won't see something inside the venue. I think people that are traveling, I mean, if you're going there, take a direct flight. Don't fly through Moscow. Don't take a train. Because I think those are the places that are likely to be um, attacked because they can't, they can't protect everything. Yeah. And, um, but, no, I don't think it should be canceled. And, and I myself would go. If you handed me tickets, like I had gave an interview this morning to the Canadians, and they said the Canadian hockey players have all decided to keep their uh, wives and uh, children at home. 
And that's probably a good decision for the athletes because can you imagine trying to focus on the games while you, in the back of your mind you're worried about the safety of your family? That's right. But I, I told them, uh, send me the tickets, I'll go, because um, <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, you know, I, it, we drive our cars in traffic, and, uh, you know, think of the drunk drivers out there. Think of the crazy yep. drivers. Yep. We cross uh, crosswalks where trucks are zooming by. You know, every day we could be killed. And, uh, you know, if you have the chance to go to the Olympics and cheer your team on, go and have a good time. We're going to take a quick time out here with Dr. Ann Speckert. If you want to check out our website, it's annspeckert.com. When we get back, we will be chatting with her about her incredible book, Talking to Terrorists. This is a fantastic read, and we'll do that when we get back here on the world-famous Jiggy Jaguar Show. Log on right now to the Jiggy Jaguar website. We have all the updates and all the bits online at www.jiggyjaguar.com. At dollarseed.com, all of our seeds are only a dollar a pack. And we have online resources that teach you all about the rewarding hobby of growing your own plants, flowers, herbs, and vegetables. Imagine the joy you'll feel when your children actually help you harvest your first garden crop. Or the pride of knowing you'll never need a florist again. Visit dollarseed.com and grow a little magic of your own for just a dollar. dollarseed.com. What could be healthier? Fundraising is a great way to raise money for schools, churches, or any charity. Car washes and bake sales are so tired and time-consuming to organize. People want to help with supporting our clubs and charities, but don't always have the time to give. There is a better way. Giggle Donation Cards. At GiggleDonationCards.com, you can raise money the easy way while making people giggle in the process. And the best part? You get 1,000% return on your initial investment. Donations range from 50 cents to $2. Who could say no to that? Just visit GiggleDonationCards.com to learn more about raising money the easy way while putting a smile on people's faces. GiggleDonationCards.com On JiggyJagwire.com Welcome back to the broadcast, coast to coast and motor to motor all over the World Wide Web and on 50 plus stations throughout the U.S. and Canada. Today on TalkRadioX.com, if you miss any part of this broadcast, it is repeated each and every weekday morning on TalkSuperStation.com. Live from the Transvideo Worldwide Studios in the Great Salt City of Hutchinson, Kansas, we are live 2 to 5 Central, 3 to 6 Eastern, 12 to 3 Pacific. 24-7 at JiggyJagwire.com on the TuneIn apps and radio loyalty. And our podcast is available as soon as we go off the air at JiggyJagwire.net. Dr. Ann Specker joins us in this next segment talking about her book, Talking to Terrorists. This is a fantastic read. Uh, tell me about the writing process for this book. Why, why did you decide to write something so cool? <laughs> well, thank you. I spent uh, 10 years... Uh interviewing terrorists and uh, had traveled to a lot of uh, dark spots of the world and uh, tried to get in their heads and I thought um, I've got to write it but uh, I'll tell you the truth I, I was less scared uh, visiting those people because I became fascinated and just put my feelings to the side when I brought out my notes and sat in front of the computer I would shake and think I can't write this book it's too scary <laughs> That's kind of crazy, isn't it? Well, I'll tell you, the, the, the book is absolutely fantastic. What, what's been some of the reviews and things you've gotten on it? Because it's been out a little bit. Yeah, I've gotten excellent reviews. It's uh, being used at the Naval Research Academy. That's uh, pretty cool. As, um, they use it as one of their adjunct uh, books, you know, with case studies. They use it in Israel, and um, they use it at Johns Hopkins. So, And maybe they use it other places, but I don't know about it. So that's cool, and uh, people seem to enjoy it, and uh, it's a long book. I, I couldn't stop writing once I started writing, but it's not, it's not written academically. It's got all the ideas in there and the, you know, the theory that you, you, you get things explained to you, but in a very uh, easy way through stories. So it's filled with stories, stories of real people, and my story of going to those places and telling you how it felt to sit with somebody with a gun on their lap or uh, if they discussed uh, holding me hostage, that kind of thing. Fantastic. 
<laughs> Fantastic. It is. Uh, I'm glad it's over, though. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I bet you are very glad that it's over. Uh, we're talking with Dr. Ann Specker with us today here on the broadcast. She was awarded a Public Health Service Fellowship in the United States Department of Health and Human Services, where she served as a research fellow. And um, you don't just have Talking to Terrorists. You have other books out there as well. Let's chat about them. Uh, Warrior Princess, a U.S. Navy SEAL's journey to coming out transgender. That is a uh, that that's a heck of a book. Let's talk about that. What was that like writing? Well, that is a really interesting one. That came out this June, and uh, last January I went to a counterterrorism conference because I'm a terrorism expert. Yep. And I I had been asked by the U.S. Navy SEALs um, leadership if I might be willing to do a resilience study with the SEALs because you know the SEALs have been going at this incredible tempo of deploying to Afghanistan and Iraq and other places, and they wanted to know how are our guys doing. So I was getting ready for that study, and I met uh, Chris Beck as a man who had just uh, retired from the SEALs. He gave a talk at this conference, and I went up to him to talk to him, and I said, you've just retired. Probably you can speak a lot more freely, and I'd like to know for the study that I'm doing of the active duties, um, if I've got my questions right, you know, if I'm thinking right, would you be willing to um, spend some time with me in interview? And he said, fine, and we hit it off. And I had this strange feeling. I'm a very intuitive person. I had a strange feeling that there was a connection of some sort, even before I went to talk to him. And in a short time, he pulled his phone out of his pocket and said, I have gender identity disorder, and showed me pictures of himself as a woman. I thought he was joking. I, I really laughed. And uh, then I realized that it wasn't a joke, and he said, I'm thinking about writing my life story, and I'd like somebody to help me. Are you a writer? And I said, well, I've written two books, but let's just do the interview and see. Well, in a couple of days, I met Kristen as a woman in a, in a, a restaurant bar. I went in looking for Chris Beck, and uh, I met Kristen. And the story she told me about her life was just so touching that I agreed to write the book. And uh, it's, it's a painful story. I mean, it's not easy to have this kind of a, a disorder. I mean, our condition maybe is the better way to say. But um, uh, Kristen is now living totally as a woman, and uh, she was a U.S. Navy SEAL. It is absolutely amazing. So, such a cool story. 37 minutes after the hour, we're talking with Dr. Ann Specker today here on the program. If you want to pick up her incredible books, we're going to have links to them on our website at JiggyJakeWire.com through Amazon. And, um, Doctor, let's let's talk about the, the other book here, Fetal Abduction, The True Story of Multiple Personalities and Murder. This is a fascinating read. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I, I tend to fall into things, and uh, I was again at a conference uh, out in my home state of Wisconsin where we just had the polar vortex, and uh, I, someone mentioned to me that there was a woman that had been arrested, that she had tried to cut the baby of another woman uh, out of her and pass the baby off as her own baby. Her name was Annette uh, Rodriguez Morales, and I had never heard of a crime like that. I mean... I've heard of people trying to kidnap other people's babies, but I never heard of, of actually taking it out of the body of a pregnant woman. And um, so I ended up talking to the lawyers, and they asked me if I would do an evaluation. And so I went to prison and met this woman, and I'll tell you, I was a little scared, and I had to laugh at myself that I wasn't scared to interview terrorists, but I was a little scared to interview her. And um, I interviewed her for two whole days, and... In the course of the interviews, it came out of all the things that had happened in her life, and um, she switched into a different personality in front of me, which I have treated people with multiple personalities, but it's, it's rare. It's very strange. It makes the hair on your um, arms go up when it happens. And her story, I wrote her story in the book, and um, I, I think it's a really sad story because she's an abuse victim that turned into a criminal, which, you know, unfortunately happens too much in this world that, you know, little kids that are abused grow up to be very sick and then hurt other people. It's Dr. Ann Speckard with us today, 39 minutes after the hour. Uh, fantastic, fantastic books. Keep up the good work, my friend. And uh, AnnSpeckard.com is her website. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Have yourself a w lovely, lovely weekend, my friend. 
And let's uh, wish everybody at the Olympic safety and uh, you rah rah for our teams. Definitely, definitely, as always, uh, okay. getting getting that USA spirit out there, my friend. That's right. Well, nice have, talking to you. Definitely. Have yourself a wonderful weekend. We'll talk soon. Appreciate mm, it. Bye. Dr. Ann Speckard with us today here on the program, coast to coast and boulder to boulder, all over the World Wide Web and on 50-plus stations throughout the U.S. and Canada. We've got a... Uh, We've got a pretty cool guest coming up in... Uh, Paul Toby will not join us in the next hour. I looked at the booking sheet wrong. I had him down for 3.15 Central. Not 3.15 Eastern. So, he's not going to join us in the next hour. 